Ladies and gentlemen, this just in from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Media moguls Floyd Wonder are now the richest men in the world. That's right, forget about Carnegie, forget about Ford, forget about Rockefeller. Floyd Wonder has the Midas touch. Sources say they're worth millions, some say billions. Look out, folks, here they come. I don't really care, I'm gonna be a millionaire like And we are live. Welcome, everybody, to the stream of the uh, Tabor Blue Jays. Um, we got a beautiful day here in Hillsboro, Kansas. Uh, it's 70 degrees. We got about a 10 to 15 mile an hour wind coming out of the south. Uh, beautiful day for football. My name is uh, Jake Jones, and um, I am joined here by Grant Myers, a living legend of Tabor football. <laughs> How you doing today, Grant? I'm great, Jake. Awesome day for football. Great weather. Uh, yeah, it's awesome fall. Loving Good. it. Good stuff. So here on the screen, we got a um, couple previews here. Uh, we got Coach Gardner uh, first off, um, and it is his 14th season. Um, and then uh, Coach Hendrickson, uh, Myers Hendrickson, uh, is leading k -Dub to a great um, start this year. Um, they are currently 7-0. and So... Yeah, um, Kansas Wesleyan's at the top of the standings right now, and uh, it's uh, really pretty close right there between Kansas Wesleyan, Bethel, and Southwestern. Uh, it should be kind of a uh, pretty interesting down the road to see how that ends up as the conference champion. Yeah, this conference is, is really deep this year. There is some serious talent in the KCAC, so. We're going to start off with some starters here. Um, first off, for K-Dub, we're going to go over the offensive line. We got Jake Balderrama. Uh, he's at left tackle, number 54. And then we got Jaron Hightower, left guard, number 53. Uh, at center, we got Trace Ott, uh, number 77. And then at right guard, number 64, Nolan Harris. And at right tackle, we got Chase Strother. <clears throat> and in the backfield, they got C.J. Fluker. Um, and then at receiver, Stevie Williams and Drayvon McComb and Roy Sanders. And then at tight end, they got Jake McClure. And the starting quarterback uh, for the Coyotes is uh, Isaiah Randall from Sacramento, California. And going over the defense, uh, we got uh, Andrew Sorensen at the outside linebacker spot. Um, and on the end, we got Scott Sanchez. And nose guard is uh, Malachi Adams, and then tackle uh, Daniel Killian, and uh, linebacker Devontae Brooks. And the defensive backfield, we got uh, first off at uh, linebacker Zaire uh, Velasquez, and at one of the corner spots, we got Cleon Hamilton. And at free safety, we got Julian Urisadi. And at the other safety spot, we got Sean Browder. And the other corner spot, we got Isaiah Freeman. And the defensive highlighted person for the Yotes is uh, Devontae Gabriel from Spring, Texas at the linebacker spot. And going over the special teams, uh, kicker Aaron Main um, and punter Miguel uh, Milan. And the long snapper will be Brendan Tackett. And then the kick returning and punt returning, both done by Drayvon McCone. And for Tabor, we've got uh, starting left tackle Ian Queering, uh, Jace Hayes, Brendan Williford at center, Zion Bowens at right guard, and Tobias Stewart at right tackle. And Tabor's starting backs and receivers, we've got Andre Renteria, uh, the senior there, and uh, Caleb Hoppus. Wide receiver, Raquez Jackson, wide receiver, and Angel Sanchez. Uh, and tight end is Jaron Usher. Our starting QB is Gustavo Villarreal from Visalia, California. The starting defense for Tabor, uh, defensive ends Parker Folks and Riggs Robin, and our defensive tackle Dakota Donaldson, Chris Casillo, and Josh Marshall for linebackers. 
In the secondary, Jordan Sukow, Khalil Mason, James Lang, Jayton Alexander, and Raymond Peralt. And our defensive highlight to this game is Cole Long from Mulvane, Kansas. As starting special teams, we've got Dehan Nelson, punter, Nathan Helig, kicker. Uh, Patrick Leonard's doing the long snapping duties. Franklin Miller is doing the kick return and punt returning duties. We'll take a break right now and join you shortly. In the name of Jesus, amen. Tabor College welcomes the Kansas Wesleyan University football team, head coach Mike Hendrickson, and fans and alumni of the Coyotes to today's contest. Now, today's officials for the game, we've got Jeff Freeman as a referee. Uh, Preston Atherton, field judge, Benjamin Rackers, umpire, Christopher Dink, side judge, Vince Parks, line judge, Jack Messer, headlinesman, and Reggie Fuller is our back judge today. And we'll take you down to the 50 yard line for the coin toss. and elected to defer. See if it is the end of the field. Let's have a good game.
So the stream team today, uh, Switcher and Director Riley Ballou Lingstead, uh, Noah Brown is with Instant Replay and Graphics, Austin Weaver running Camera 1, Oscar Saldivar Camera 2, and Aiden Unruh Camera 3. Big shout out to the stream team. Uh, they're doing a fantastic job this year. Uh, really high quality stuff. We're grateful and thankful for them. Very, very thankful. They do an outstanding, outstanding job. So it uh, looked like uh, Tabor won the, uh, the toss there, and uh, they deferred to the second half, and they're going to be kicking off to the, the Yotes here. Just real quick, I wanted to give a shout-out to uh, the uh, student that uh, did the national anthem, Brianna Lett. Uh, that was beautifully done, beautifully absolutely, done. Absolutely, that was fantastic. Helig set to kick off. That's kind of a kind of pop up pooch kick there. I think they're trying to avoid sending it deep to the return man. They're taking it down um, right there about the 32 yard line is where the Coyotes will start. Yeah, again, Kansas Wesleyan is off to a great start this year. Um, they uh, they're currently ranked seventh in the country, um, and they uh, kick. they are First down. just really off to a good start. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Kansas Wesleyan uh, is coming in averaging forty th or forty three points a game, um, which is the eleventh ranked offense in the NAIA right now. So they're they're not having a whole lot of trouble uh, moving the ball and putting uh, points up on the the scoreboard. Uh, they're actually passing yards. Uh, they're they're ranked uh, third in the NAIA with 2,349 yards uh, through seven games. Yep, I'm really excited to see uh, see our defense go up against them. Um, they definitely seem to be up to the challenge, um, which is which is awesome. And um, you know what? And it, and it will be a challenge today. So, Randall comes out to lead the Yotes on their first drive um, in the shotgun. Pass thrown to number 86 for a couple yards. Yeah, it's interesting, Tabor coming out in kind of like a, a, a five-man front there to that uh, trips formation, uh, walked up backers. It'd be kind of interesting to see if that's a theme or if that was uh, just a formation specific. Definitely seems that um, Kansas Wesleyan wants to work out quick here to start. Yep, they're uh, getting the ball out really quick and using that kind of quick passing game, uh, uh, more lateral passing game. To, a lot of teams just use that as a, as a run supplement, essentially. Um, and just try to get the hands and their playmakers out Third there. Third down and five. And try to make a play. It really seems, too, that it's a good strategy at the beginning of the game just to get guys going a little bit, too. Um, that's just kind of my inside, I think, on that. So Absolutely. Get them some high percentage completions and uh, just get the ball rolling. Big third down right here. Looks like he just got it. That's uh, number five, C.J. C.J. Fulker with the carry. That's a first down. Ball yeah, CJ Fluker, he's uh, definitely in 49 a, yard line. He's a load. He he runs low. He runs hard. Uh, got some uh, explosiveness for sure. And that's another handoff to Fluker right there. Good job by the Tabor defense. Yeah, gain of about two. C.J. Falker with a two-yard gain. Tackle by the front seven. Yeah, Kansas Wesleyan is definitely looking to move quick. And another handoff. Falker again on this. And another carry. gain of about two or so. Takes the ball down to the table. This will be a yeah, good tackle by uh, Chris Castillo. He's, he's recognizing the run field. quickly and uh, filling the hole. 
Let's see if we can get a stop here on, on third down. You're bringing a little bit of pressure. Mm, kind of went backwards there. Yeah, it's going to depend on where they spot, but it looked like he got the first half up here. Yep, they're going to move the chains. Catch and a first down, That's a catch by Stevie Williams right there. And Jayton Alexander did a good job there recognizing it and getting back. Just get his head down and, yep, make a tackle. Little double tight. Just kind of a quick hitch route out there to Stevie Williams and you know, turns a, a little four yard completion, turns it Stevie into Williams about 10 yards. Catch. He's out away from on the tackle. The Tabor 28 yard line. That is a first down, however, for the Coyotes. Number 86 goes in motion right there. Drops back. Good pass rush. And there we go. Yep, we got a little pressure there with Riggs Robin. Kind of hurried up that throw a little bit and got the uh, timing disrupted. Otherwise, he had some some room there for sure. Fluker could have could have went to ways if he would have got that pass. But good job by the Blue Jays, um, getting a play for no down or no gain right there. This will be a big one here, too, so we can get a third and down, or third and long. They're kind of sticking with that uh, 12 personnel and just a little zone play. Up the middle for DJ about five. With the six carry. Man, they like to work quick, don't they? Third down and four for the Coyotes. Tackle on the play, Chris Castillo. Oh, man, it looks like he caught that. Too. Did Brought make the catch, but it was a really good tackle coming up and getting him right there, keeping him short of the first down. Kansas Wesleyan has a decision to make right here. Kind of kicking into the wind if they elect to do that. It looks like they're going to go for it. Does look like it. Yep, kind of packing everything in tight. And Fluker looks like he got right at the sticks, and I think he might have got the first down. Yeah, going to pin where they the spot it right Short here. And, and first down. Jack. Yep, he, he just got there. It was a good uh, second effort right there by Fluker. And it was just enough for a first down on the Tabor 18. First and 10 for the Coyotes. It looks like they've got uh, Stephen Harvey in there running back now, giving Fluker a rest. They're going to check down to him. He breaks one tackle and another. He's getting close there. Looks like he's going to be just short of the goal line. Yeah, Stephen Harvey, 5'8", 195-pound junior out of Berkeley, California from Contra Costa College. He's... Uh, Kind of, you know, you see him out there, he, he, he reminds you a little bit of like a, a Darren Sproles type almost. You know, short, compact, got some uh, explosiveness there and a little bit of elusiveness, obviously, that run. Good stop by the Blue Jays there on the first and goal call. Looked like Jayton Alexander uh, had came up and Steven made Harvey a good play from the safety game. position. And Josh Marshall came around the edge That's like right. a bolt right there. That's right. Castillo with the Tabor tackle, second and goal. Got second and goal from the one. A little bit of a pass play, quick slant. And oh, incomplete. That's a, a incomplete outstanding. Pass. Outstanding defense was right there in position. Up nicely by That's James Lang. James Lang. I think he's the, yeah, he's the freshman uh, from Alameda, California. Sorry, Tabor Richard, sophomore. From the Tabor one and a half yard line. Good job by Tabor defense so far on this goal line. 
possession. Going back to the run. And the That's, D line gets in there. Parker lose. Folks and what else was that? Lose about a half a yard. Fourth and two for the Coyotes from the Tabor two yard line. And Fluker's checking back in. Uh, looks like they're going to go a, a little bit lighter of a package. Um, taking their extra linemen out. It's a handoff to Fluker. And, and he just squeezed in there with that well, last the uh, reach. And uh, looks like they've got the, with the, the touchdown, touchdown there. So close right there. Just that extra second effort again. Just kind of stretched out the ball and broke the goal line. It is good play by uh, Fluker to be able to have the awareness just to stretch that out over the goal line and get the touchdown. It's a good job by the uh, Tabor defense on uh, really kind of holding them for those downs there that close. You know, given they're the uh, third ranked offense the extra point in the country. No um, but yeah, they just couldn't close that out, close out that fourth down Tabor play, which has kind of been a little bit of the story of the Blue Jays this year. Um, little plays like that tend to add up throughout the, the course of games and just haven't been able to make those plays so far in the season when it counted. And the extra point actually was no good. Um, I knew it was going to be a challenge kicking into the wind um, that direction. So we'll see if that plays a story here throughout the whole game, kicking that way. So Blue Jays look to take their first possession here. It actually looks like that wind even picked up a little bit. I think it did too. The trees around the stadium here are definitely, the leaves are definitely moving a little bit. Aaron May to kick off for the Coyotes. Aaron Maines getting ready to kick off. And, yep, the wind is going to be a little bit of a story here. The ball just fell Franklin off the tee. We will call a mulligan right there and try to run this back. Franklin Miller is back deep for the Blue Jays. Let's see what we can do right here from Palm Springs, California. Oh, another pooch kit from them, too. There we go. So that was Jacob, Jacob Fowl. Fowl. Fowl actually uh, fielded that one. Running back out of McPherson. Blue Jays going to start with a pretty good field possession. Got the 40-yard line here. It'll be interesting to see how they, <laughs> they, they go about it, uh, attacking this uh, Kansas Wesleyan defensive unit. Um, a lot of young guys on the offense this year and uh, some really good talent at the wide receiver position for sure. We'll see if they're going to maybe come out passing or running. Looks like Villarreal tries to dump it off there. Out to Franklin Last Miller. Wasn't Villarreal able to complete to that. Is incomplete. Brings up second and ten for the Blue Jays. Yeah, I'm excited to see how this O-line you know, really works together and, um, and uh, you know, just learns throughout this whole year. I mean, they're all young, and, and we know how important. I mean, Grant, you know more than anybody. they got to work as a unit, and being able to develop over a couple years, they, I'm really excited for the future with those guys. Absolutely. Uh, they, you know, they're, uh, I think, the most senior uh, uh, offensive lineman we have right now is exactly. Zion Bowens. He's a redshirt sophomore. Um, so a lot of freshmen. Uh, a lot of uh, youth on the offensive line, definitely some good young talent. Uh, they've got to continue to mature and play together and uh, get stronger and bigger and kind of the story of, of college football. Is, oh, here we go. Right. We've hit uh, Angel go Sanchez. Oh, the Hit him just on a quick 
kind of uh, deep crossing route and looked like a blown coverage maybe there. And that was Angel Sanchez, another freshman on this team. Yeah, Angel's been able to make some really good plays this year. I'm kind of impressed with that. And it looked like the defender just kind of lost his footing there. Um, left Angel wide open for the touchdown. Great job, Blue Jays. For the Blue Jays to attempt the extra point. About a 50-yard pass play. The kick is up and good. And Tabor takes the lead, 7-6. And with that extra point right there, Tabor takes the lead early in the ball game. So not only did they convert on the third and long, we got a touchdown. That's big time. Absolutely, man. That's, a, that's, a, that's an exciting way to get going into this uh, first quarter here. Um, those big plays. You know, it seems like that's actually one of the ways that the Blue Jays have been able to put up quite a few points this year is just kind of on some big plays like that. A little bit of the challenge for them is having long, sustained drives. Um, and, you know, that's part of that, uh, that youthful aspect of a young football team is learning how to put together long drives. Uh, but the great part about that is if you can put up big plays, all points count the same, so we we'll definitely take that. And yeah, we'll see what we can do on defense now. And again, the extra point was good by Helig, and he is back to kick off for the Blue Jays. Looks like Daniel Killian is back there to receive it. Let's yeah. go into the end zone. That, that was a boot the right there Kansas by Healy. The That's a touchback. So Randall and uh, Kansas Weston are going to take over here at the 20. Um, you know, I'm looking up and down the roster, Grant, and uh, Kansas Wesleyan has a lot of junior college guys, and not only um, junior college guys, just, I mean, I guess with that also comes just um, – some veterans they have a lot of older guys on their team and um yeah just a lot of guys from all over the place and uh yeah absolutely that's uh that actually kind of that tradition of junior college uh, players particularly from california with kansas wesleyan has gone all the way back to the dave dallas era um you know 15 years ago that was a trend even back then now he's in tr trouble here and just kind of throws it away out of bounds. That's a good job of Parker Great folks getting in there, Dakota Donaldson getting some pressure on uh, Isaiah Randall to force that throw away. Probably should have been a hold there on uh, Donaldson too. It's a good hole up the CJ middle Fulker there with the carry for, the uh, for Fluker. He's going to pick up about, about six. Seven yards on the play. Brings up third down and three for Kansas Wesleyan. We've got a third and three coming up here. It would be great if we could get a, get a stop here and maybe force a punt. Looks like early at least, whenever they have these short yards to go, they look to go, just kind of run fans. it up the middle. It looks like they're going defense. empty backfield though right here, so... That's interesting. interesting. Let's maybe see if they're going to do a little quick dump off route just to try to pick up three, four yards. Oh, good pressure. Oh, he looks to scramble Flushed right here. Out. And just kind of slides there, picked up the first down. A gain of about 10. He's going to get up to about the 45-yard line. Isaiah Randall with the scramble for the first down. Kansas West Randall showing that he is pretty mobile. It's always just that extra line. weapon to be able to to be able to use. Yeah, that's another piece the defense has to account for. I'm gonna give off a little zone play. Fluker's gonna pick up about two. Short gain by Fulker on the Look like Jaden Alexander got up there. Up second and eight made that play. Wesleyan. Yeah, Jaden's been an, he's been impressive. He's had to uh, come in to 
come into the, uh, the just the spotlight, I guess, um, as a freshman coming into this defense, playing safety is is not an easy thing to do. Um, Tabor's defense is definitely complex to say the least, and he's been showing he can uh, and the ball uh, handle is the assignment. Deep and there we go. yep, That's and complete. Pass brings up third down and eight. Yeah, that's some good defense. He's right there with them step by step. That's Khalil Mason there on the coverage. Pass was intended for Stephen Williams. Five nine, hundred and eighty pound freshman there Third from New Orleans. Tabor fans, here we go. Third and long right here. Trips to the boundary and barely held on to the snap there. He's going to try to Ooh. run and kind of shovels it to Fluker there. Fluker's going to pick up that first down. This is a really good improv by uh, Isaiah Randall there. First down for Kansas Westland. Turning a potential broken play into a first down for the Coyotes. It really was. You know, a lot of quarterbacks will just kind of, when, when that happens, they'll kind of put their nose down and just start running and he kept his eyes up field and looking for looking to get that first down a little flea flicker they're gonna go deep and uh it's a little bit too far there randall just Second overthrew him that was nick osman that uh, checked in right there at tailback Looks like they're going to keep him in for uh, again. A little two by two set. And the pistol is going to pass. He's going to check down, or oh, he's going to hit him right at the sticks. Did a good job of coming up there and at least keeping him short of the first down. Like you get Stevie Williams Tackle out on the there. play by number 22, Khalil Mason. Brings up third and one for the Coyotes on the Tabor 31-yard line. Looks like Kansas Wesson brought in a few more big boys there for this third and one play. Kind of a hard count. Yeah, a little audible right there. Hands it off up the middle. Going to get the first down, gain of about two. Is that Nick Alsman? That was Nick Alsman. Nick Alsman with the carry for the first down. Belly Bill, first Kansas. And 10 for the Coyotes on the Tabor 24-yard line. Yeah, it's a, Kansas Wesleyan's got an interesting offense. You look at number six, Roy Sanders. Sorry, six foot, 265-pound senior out of Sac City College. Uh, he's a big boy. They kind of use him, you know, you call it, uh, I think they call it a mobile back. We used to call it a sniffer back. Um, yeah, that's a, it's kind of like having an extra lineman. Um, he looks a little more athletic than a lineman, though. Um, incomplete pass brings up second and ten for the Coyotes. Got an incomplete there. Going to be second and ten. Yeah, I'd love to see if they're going to get the ball to Roy Sanders at all or if he's just going to be blocking the whole time. And a quick pass out on the sideline there. Number like Pat 33, Pat and German. Now with the Tabor tackle. A transfer from University of Utah. Nathan German with a catch. Brings up third down and four yards to go for the Coyotes. Boy, we need to get a stop on third down. They've converted about four third downs on this drive. They hand it off to Fluker, looks like. You ask and you shall receive, Grant. Here we go. We got a fourth down here. Let's see if they're going to go for it or... Mm. Big time decision again. They're bringing the heavy personnel back in. Jawan Thompson on a big stick for the Blue Definitely Jays. Definitely going to go for it again. And 
Picking in the win. From the Tabor 22 yard line. So they're bringing in DeAndre Childress, number 75, extra lineman. And they're going like to do a little play action show. fake. Oh, oh hey, 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 that's a fumble. A fumble. Ooh, we they're call him down. Call him down right there. It'll be a turnover on downs. Yep. Nevertheless, yes. Blue Jay ball. A great uh, uh, turnover on downs for the Blue Jays. Randall is uh, really slow uh, to get up. It's uh, bad to see. It looks like he might have tweaked his knee. Uh, let's, uh, let's take a, a little break for a, a little commercial break and injury timeout. Uh, and we'll Parker say a quick Fultz prayer here sack. for Riggs Robin Isaiah also Randall. assisted on that play. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started Let's on your plan nice today. For the MB Foundation, coyote, giving meaning to to money. And we're back. And here's the replay. Um, really, really close to being out right there. First and ten for the Blue Jays. Yeah. Parker Folks got back there. and You hate to see uh, one of the best players in the conference go down like that. I hate to see quarter. it, yes. Particularly, uh, you know, we hope he's okay, particularly because Kansas Wesleyan, you know, we want everyone to be at full health when they represent the KCAC in the playoffs. Absolutely. So like Gustavo uh, Villarreal is going to just kind of take a quarterback keeper That's a quarterback up there. Ball. Quarterback draw by Looks like we've got about four yards. Bring up, it's a gain of four. Bring up second and six for the Blue Jays. Let's see what we dial up here on uh, second down. I'd like to see Renteria maybe get some touches. It's been a good uh, asset. We're gonna good go pass. To Jerron Usher and first down. Move the chains. First down. Blue Jays. Jerron Usher with the catch for the Blue Jays. Nice pass from Villarreal. Good play right there. You get that first down. Let me see. Sits right down and gets a couple more yards after the catch. Hmm. Now Villarreal got flushed out there early. Pass from Villarreal there was some to protection Renteria. problems. Brings up second and ten for the Blue Jays. Blue Jays got a, a new center playing today. Uh, Brendan Williford, uh, uh, normal starting center, I believe, is. Um, oh no, I'm sorry, he's in there. We had a different guard Renteria playing. For the Blue Jays. Nice so we've got Joseph T. Is uh, in the five game the Blue now. Jays. On their 48 yard it's like line. he's playing left guard there. The third and five, big third down right here. And again, picked it up. Good job, Villarreal threads the needle there to uh, Angel Sanchez. Yep. Picks up the first down. Angel Sanchez off to a good start. Hope you have him in your fantasy football teams. <laughs> He's putting up some putting up some fantasy points. That's for sure. Looks like Jacob File in there running back. Play action. Oh, there he is. Ah, oh, oh, just, uh, just out of reach. 
had Angel Sanchez for another touchdown. Just uh, let him a little too far. You know, maybe the I mean that the wind is is definitely a factor today, and you know they're going with the wind now, and that definitely looked like the wind just kind of caught that and took off on him. Yeah, definitely. I, I, you know, I really I've, I've never thrown a football in a live game in my life. I can't imagine <laughs> what that is like for a quarterback to have to take that into account. But I'm sure you do a good job of it on the golf course. Oh, you bet. I've snapped a football. <laughs> good at that. Ooh. Again, just out of reach. Too high for Franklin Miller. Third down for the Blue Jays at the K-Dub 43-yard line. Done a good job of uh, picking up third downs here as of late. Let's see what we dial up right here. And like some of the rollouts they've been doing, it's a big help if we can do that for the young offensive linemen to be able to just kind of get a little extra protection rather than some uh, straight drop back protection. Oh, here we go. Good block, good block. Out to file. It's going to be close. Be, looks like about a yard short of the first. That's a good run right there by Jacob File. We're going to have a decision to make right here. This is in that little area where you definitely think about it. Looks. And that is the end of the first quarter, so Coach Gardner's going to have some time to think about it here. And uh, we'll go ahead and take a break with him. I get this feeling in my spirit when I'm low. A compass in my soul Saying child come on back now You've been gone too long Let me lead you back where you belong Right next to me Right next to me Tabor College Athletics would like to invite you to join the Blue Jay Backers. The purpose of the Blue Jay Backers is to support the Tabor College Athletic Department in its mission to create an environment for student athletes. And we're back here. Learning, Just had a good point brought up to us uh, by our football expert growth. here in the booth, uh, David Ediger. Um, talking about just if we were going to think about going for the field goal, um, calling a timeout there and kicking with the wind, but um, definitely now it uh, looks like they were just going to go for it anyway. And, Looks like fourth and a, not even a yard. Oh, and he's going to get under center now. And hand it off. And uh, it off ah. the file. He's going to be short there. Is that number five, 15? Look like Christian uh, Bowman broke the line and got in and made the tackle behind the line. Unsuccessful yeah, I think uh, Coach Gardner probably just kind of had his mind made up that they were going to go for it and um, just try to be able to get some uh, touchdowns on the board. I imagine that's probably what he's thinking. Yeah, understandably so. And it looks like we got Tony White now in for Kansas Wesleyan, and that is a handoff to CJ Fluker. They're in hurry up mode. They're going hurry up here, and they're going to do another handoff to Fluker right up the middle. And looks like he's going to pick up about seven on the yard or uh, seven yards on that play. And it looks seven like Grant um, on that fourth and short when we ran it with Jacob. Um, it looks like uh, Renneria is over here with the trainers getting some work done. And I just think that maybe on that fourth and short that we would have gone maybe you know the bigger back, and that's definitely why right there. Yeah, you, 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 yeah, I was wondering about that too. We had the bigger back in there uh, for a short yardage play like that. So yeah. Kind of makes you wonder a little bit. Yeah, so hopefully he's all right. Looks like maybe he's just getting a, an equipment adjustment, actually. So, Kansas Wesley and two uh, really good plays here to start the possession. Um, Tony White doing a good job uh, so far coming in and uh, getting the offense back going. So, Tony White's from Cincinnati, Ohio. We got Fluker again up the middle. 
and uh, it's going to take about two Blue Jays to bring him down there, all the way down to the 18. It's going to be first down at the 18 for Kansas Wesleyan. They're going to stick with that personnel group and hurry it up. Man, White is a really big dude out there, isn't he? He is. We've got him listed at 6'3", 210 pounds. Got three right there. He's going to throw it up. Just Probably be a little up. bit too... A little bit too deep, yep. That pass falls incomplete in the back of the end zone. The pass was intended for number 86 for the Coyotes. And Khalil Mason. Khalil Mason doing a good job so far here today in coverage. Yeah, it's a talented group of receivers from Kansas Wesleyan. Big bodies, athletic guys. And high-powered offense. It's uh, definitely a, a tall order to keep up with them. A little inside zone handoff there. Looked like that was Nick Alsman. He picked up about three. James Lane came up there to make the tackle. We got third and six, third and third seven. Seven for the Coyotes on the Tabor 15 yard line. Looks like they got three receivers out. Let's make some noise, Tabor Blue Jays. And Nick Alsman still in the backfield. I'm back in 11 personnel. Going to do another Hand handoff to Alsman. And he is stopped short of the first down. So we got another fourth down. It's been. Quite a few fourth downs, it seems like, for this game so far. I'll be interested to see if they try to kick here, though, with the backup quarterback in. Nope, yeah, they're, they're going to still go for it. Very aggressive. Bringing in Roy Sanders back in. Let's hear you, Tabor fans. The mobile back's going to line up at tight end. Hand off to Alsman. Alsman's uh, going to score here. Touchdown. Just a well-executed zone play. Really was. Nick Alsman on the carry. Yeah, that's Nick Alsman with the touchdown there. He's looked really good today. Twelve seven. Kansas Wesleyan on top. Missed their first uh, point after attempt. Let's see if they can get this one through. They're going uh, kicking with the wind now. It's Aaron Main in the kick and he Aaron splits Main the uprights. It's good. The 13-7 so we'll uh, see what the Blue Jays can do on offense. Uh, we'll join you shortly. We'll take a quick break. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsborough and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit Fleming'sMiniStoreAll.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Franklin Miller is deep for the Blue Jays on the kickoff. So we're back. We've got uh, Franklin Miller deep there to return. 13-7, Kansas Wesleyan's on top. He's going to bring it out. Makes a cut and gets up to about uh, 20, tackled by a gang of coyotes. Miller brings the ball out to the 20 yard line for the Blue Jays, where they will start first and 10. So, last time the Blue Jays were out, uh, we had a turnover on downs, went for it on fourth and one. Uh, pretty good drive before that, picked up three first downs. Let's see if they kind of stick up, uh, stick with that uh, run pass mix and see if we can get another big play going. A little inside handoff there to Renteria. <coughs> Looks like he's going to pick up maybe Renteria three or four. On the carry for the Blue Jays. 
Picks up four. Yeah, it doesn't look like he was. Second and six. Had any injury right there on that run. Looked well there. Renteria has had a pretty good season so far. He's averaging over 100 yards a game. Um, he's been one of the primary weapons for Tabor this year. Yeah, Jacob File back in there. And some good protection. Mm. Jackson can't hold on to that one. He's going to bring up uh, for number two for the Blue Jays. third and seven. Jackson, Jackson falls incomplete. Brings up third and seven. From the Tabor third and, and that was Freeman the there on the coverage. The Got there just in time. If he would have been there any earlier, though, might have been there a little too early. <laughs> Perfect timing. All right, third down here. <clears throat> Oh, oh! I was looking for Hoppus on that. It looked like there was a little bit of a miscommunication. That pass from Villarreal falls incomplete. Brings up fourth down for the Blue Jays. So we've got the first punt of the game going to happen here. Got the Han Nelson in there to boot it away. It'll be interesting. It's punting into the wind. The punt for Tabor. Let's see if he can get a. Good spiral off and kind of cut through that wind a little bit. Stevie Williams is back to return the punt. Looks like it's it takes a, a Tabor bounce. That's good. That's a really good punt. Is. And Hoppus grabs Griffin it there at about the 28-yard line. 28-yard line. First and ten That's a big-time punt into the wind there, Grant. Absolutely. I, you know, the wind's gusting pretty hard. That's uh, definitely a, a good thing to be able to get that bounce your way. And, yep. Check out their great selection of Tabor College gear. And Tony White comes back out. They've been in this 12 personnel quite a bit, and usually every time they've done that, it seems like they're uh, just sticking to the run. Little inside handoff. About three yards for Fluker. Brings up second and seven for the Coyotes. Can you tell the future, the Grant? 31 yard line. <laughs> mm -hmm. You pick up on things when oh. you watch the hours and hours of film that. Uh, kind of. It takes to be a college football player. We've Fluker got uh, Fluker. Yeah, he's just been Kansas he's been Kansas having a game so line. far. Looked like the line might have jumped a little early there. They didn't call it though. So quick pass right there. The chains weren't even set yet. That's how fast they like to move. Yeah. Yep. Stevie Williams for the Coyotes. Yeah, they've Eight been hitting Stevie on, on that uh, little short stop route. All game long. I, I really wouldn't be surprised if they've got the wind right now that they take a shot, a little stop and go uh, action for him. <laughs> They're taking a shot right there. That was some really good coverage by James Lang. Uh, Grant, that's why they pay you the big bucks. You are two for two on calling plays right now. From the 50-yard line. Yeah, that's uh, as a defensive back, uh, you know, that's that's extremely tough to. You just see Fluker just pounding the ball, pounding the ball, pounding the ball, and not let your eyes creep into the backfield too much and and play the guy. That's uh, that's tough. It's good assignment football there by Lang. Back to that inside handoff there. We've got Nick Alsman in. That's a big time third down conversion right there. Yeah, I mean that's uh, you know, third and seven. They've got some confidence in their in their backs and their offensive Western. line to run that third On and seven. The Tabor, forty three yard line. Grant, when a when a team moves this quick, it's gotta tire out a defense. Yeah, it it, it definitely does. 
I mean, they're they're getting up there, that getting set incomplete. so quick. Brings up second and ten for the Coyotes. You got to almost have really eight to ten guys on that defensive line that are constantly rotating in just to stay fresh. Yeah. Looks like we got a flag on the play. Is that our first flag of the game? I think yeah, I think so. I think so. First time we've seen the yellow laundry on the field. Way downfield. Offense. That's a five-yard penalty. Second down. Now, sometimes you see that uh, ineligible man downfield uh, with the got a lot of the RPO offenses that are happening today. Um, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's tough as an offensive lineman to run that kind of an offense. Like they're going to run it with Allsman again. He's going to pick up the penalty yardage and then Chris some. Castillo with the tackle for Tabor. That's game so this will bring up eight, a third and long seven, right here again. From the Tabor 41-yard line. Oh. Looks like... Uh, Time out. Yeah, take a time, time out. out, maybe give these guys a breather, Taylor. and the first of the half. we'll join them in that timeout. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County Taylor and the surrounding like areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro game. Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic is a supporter of Tabor College and proud to treat our Tabor students and athletes. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic offers affordable chiropractic care for the entire family. We offer spinal adjustments and cold laser therapy, decompression and flexion distraction therapy, and are board certified in acupuncture as well as DOT certified. Come see us at 122 South Main Street in Hillsboro or call Panzer Chiropractic Clinic for an appointment today at 620-947-3157. Excellence and stimulates Christian growth. Your contribution is an investment in the tradition of excellence that is Tabor College Athletics. If you are interested in joining, go on to Thank you for supporting. Back at it here. And correction, I said third down before the timeout. It is actually a second down. Right. Well, they're going back to that same zone play there with Alsman, and he's going to be right at the sticks. We'll see if they're going to move the chains. Yep, they're going to move the chains. Man, they they just keep going back to that play, don't they? If it's if it's working, keep doing it, I guess. Yeah, that's uh, that, that's that's what you know. You have an identity as a a team, and they've got couple of guys and uh, they know what their identity is and they know what they can get and they've got some confidence in that you know that's very true and you know the more you see that play like you said you touched on it a little bit earlier but the defense you really really I mean you, you obviously got to find a way to stop what they're doing a lot and then once the defense does that you just kind of take your shots so. yeah, absolutely although our corners have done a good job tonight one-on-one -on -one too so um, I'd be interested to see if, uh, you know, our decent defensive strategy kind of just tries to take something away and take that run up the middle away if we can. There's a one-on-one. -on -one. There's that shot there. Get you. And another. It's good uh, Good coverage there. Great coverage. And Khalil Mason again. Yep. Yep, Khalil Mason in there again. Yeah, these corners are doing a great job. And like you, again, touched on, these receivers for Kansas Wesleyan, have, they're good. They're really good. I mean, some of the best in the whole country. Yep, big athletic guys for sure. You're going to hand it off to Alsman. It's a hard run. Yeah. He's going to, looks like he's going to end up about maybe two, three yards shy. So we have another fourth down coming up. The Kansas Wesleyan's gone for it every time on fourth down. Um, we'll see what they uh, choose to do here. You know, Jaden Alexander has made some big tackles coming in, you know, just 
realizing it's the run, recognizing it, and just coming in and, and making that open, just making that first hit. Absolutely. Drops back, good pass rush, flushes him out, ah, and scrambles away, and it's a good run there by. Yep, that's a good run. Tony White, the QB scramble just made something happen with his legs. And uh, that wild card is one of those things we've just had a little bit of trouble with throughout the, the year, being able to uh, keep those scrambles under control. And it's good coverage, but great play by uh, Kansas Wesleyan. And the kick there is uh, good again by Aaron Main. So he shakes off the first missed extra point and uh, comes back and hits the next two. I mean, that's a good job as a kicker. I mean, when you miss one, it, it can get in your head a little bit. And um, I know he was kicking into the wind, so it's a little more challenging. And now he's kicking with the wind. But still, you know, that's a good job of being mentally tough right there and, and knocking him down. Those points, I mean, every point's big, you know, and it comes down to the end of the game. and can't really pass up on any kind of opportunities and Aaron Main did a good job right there. Absolutely. I'd be excited to see if we can uh, put together a, a, a good long drive right here and uh, you know at a minimum be able to get the defense a little bit of rest and uh, play a little bit of possession. We do get the ball. Do we get the ball at second half too? Yeah, we'll receive a yeah. second half kickoff. So if we could come in here and have a, put a good drive together and maybe take some time off the clock too while we're doing it and score and then get a little two-for-one right there, I, I mean, it'd be huge. Absolutely. So, yeah, this is probably, in my opinion, one of the most important drives of the game. I mean, going into the locker room, if we're able to, you know, get it a – get it within striking distance I think we feel good about ourselves and, and get a strategy going into the second half and seeing what we can do yeah, let's see what they come out with right here we got uh, Renteria carry there on the last uh, drive let's maybe see if they go back to him and try to take some time off of this clock and get in a rhythm here and they do hand off, and big nose guard got through there and clogged it up. Uh, it's number nine and number 50. And got Killian and uh, Sorensen getting in there. We got Franklin Miller there in the backfield, along with Renteria. Oh, that's ahead. a good throw and a good catch and a good run after the catch. It's a great play by Caleb Hoppus there. So the gain of about 20 yards and picks up a first down. Great throw by Villarreal. Right on target, right on point. Good pass protection by the offensive line. Gave him time. Yeah. Those kinds of plays are the ones that uh, you see a young team like this making and uh, you just you, you get so uh, excited for the future. Um, all these guys have an opportunity to be back, and uh, it's going to be a good thing. We tried a little play action there. We're going to lose about 10 yards on that sack. So it looked like we had uh, Zaire Velasquez in there on that uh, sack. I think it was Daniel Killian, too. Oh, and there's a bomb. Oh. Just out of reach of Jackson. So this is a tough spot to be in as an offense. You've got a third and 18. Um, I think they try some kind of screen right here or see what see what happens, see if they can't. 
Yeah, what do you, you, think, right? you, you don't have a whole lot of options. Um, you're either thinking the screen or try to dump it off short and maybe make something happen underneath. Uh, just kind of depends if they're expecting pressure too. And uh, Kansas Wesleyan is going to bring six. Mm. Just couldn't complete that little uh, like uh, check That's down what they were there. trying to do there. Had receivers out there blocking and. Those kinds of things, that's what uh, other teams have been, they've been making those plays uh, throughout the year, and we haven't been able to uh, kind of make those plays and do those little things right. Got uh, Nelson back in there to punt again. See if we can't get another big-time punt. Tuck him back in there. Get another Tabor bounce. It is all right. Goes out of bounds there about the 23-yard line. That's good. That's a good punt right there. We're going to make them uh, definitely go uh, length of the field if they want to get a score in before half. We've got about five minutes here um, before the end of the half. You know, Tony White has done, I know I, I've already said it, but, you know, when a, ba when a backup quarterback comes in, like, especially on a high-powered offense that, um, you know, is, is running and doing really well, and then that happens, a devastating injury like that, and you bring in a backup quarterback, usually there's a little bit of rust and it takes a little bit, and he's done a really good job of keeping the offense flowing, and, I mean, Kansas Wesleyan should be really glad to see that. Yeah, that's right. That's, uh, you know, when you're a playoff-ready team like Kansas Wesleyan is, uh, you know, it, there, there's not going to be a whole lot of drop-off from the talent uh, skill level um, from those guys that are doing the, the backup roles. A little short pass out there. Look at that. It's back out to uh, Stevie Williams. And he's able to kind of shake and bake and get up there for gain of six or seven. Shake and bake. A little bit of shake and bake. <laughs> Going to Fluker here. That last play, you know, by Lang, I, I know it, it, it may not even get talked about or noticed, but he did a good job of really containing Stevie right there because, I mean, if he decides to go one, if he's too aggressive one direction while he's getting blocked, it just gives Stevie Williams the, you know, the clear lane to, to have a touchdown. I mean, he was the only person in, in, in the way of him and contained him well enough until the other Blue Jays got over to, to corral him up. So Yeah, absolutely. Knowing where your help is is, is critical when you're dealing with uh, – uh, some athletes like uh, Kansas Wesleyan has out there. Underneath route there. And a couple of missed tackles. To gain about 12 in the first down there for the Coyotes. Got about three minutes left. So really not pressed for time here. They got they got enough time to go down and make something happen. Don't need to rush too much. Run up the middle. Oh, get and over Fluker's there. Fluker's going to break away. That's a big tackle. And Jayton Alexander has a touchdown saving tackle there. Man, we keep saying his name a lot, don't we? That's right. The big Roy Sanders kind of led the way on that play. The mobile back position there. Let's we'll see if they go back to that uh, inside zone handoff there now that Alsman's in. They do. He's going to pick up about a yard or two. Good job by the D-line there. Ooh, this looks like uh, we had Mitchell Lepke in there, you know, freshman out of California, getting in on that tackle. We got Preston. Uh, Piles coming in, too, uh, on the D-line. Going to hit Allsman out there. And he's going to pick up enough for a first down. 
it's going to be uh, looks like first and goal from the 10. Yep, still uh, two minutes left. So they got, again, plenty, plenty of time. Gonna hand it off to Alsman. He'll pick up uh, one or two. And folks, just a quick score update that we just saw. Uh, St. Mary is actually ahead of uh, Avila right now, um, getting close to halftime. They're up 24 to 13. So we'll keep watching that game. Um, that's a little surprising to see that right now. It seems like over the years, St. Mary's will. They'll, they'll kind of they'll kind of do that every once in a while. They'll pop up and and knock off one of the uh, higher ranked teams and surprise the conference. A little too high there. We got a flag on the play. We'll see what see what they call here as the pass was incomplete. Looks like it's on the on Kansas Wesleyan. They're coming to talk to. Coach Gardner to see uh, see what he's uh, going to decide to do. Look like he kind of wanted to get a little and input there. Player downfield, offense number fifty-four. That's a five-yard penalty. Second down. Man, Kansas Wesleyan is up on the ball, trying to make the snap right now as the ref's still making the call. Yeah, they want to keep that, keep their foot on the gas pedal. A little draw play to Alsman. He's going to make a good move and get in for the touchdown. So we've got 26 to 7, uh, Kansas Wesleyan on top. About a minute 20 left in the game. We're going to see if Aaron Main can make it uh, 27. Looks like it's good. It's good. 27 7. <clears throat> So let's see, uh, we got, what, a minute, 24 left. Let's see what we can put together right here. Need a good return to give us some good uh, field position and see what we can do here before half. Yeah, you'd love to see some kind of positive momentum going into halftime. I know Kansas Wesleyan's up by quite a bit right now, and deservingly so. They, they like, I mean, like we keep talking about, they're playing some good football. But you know, there's been a lot of lot of good things that we're seeing from this, you know, the Blue Jay football team. So, yeah, absolutely. These young guys, uh, a lot of them are stepping up. They're they're getting tons and tons of experience and learning. Uh, you can watch a lot of them, like literally, learning while they're playing. Um, absolutely. You know, they, they just show signs, and, and you, you see it, you know, that it's there. And as soon as they can, you know, make that next step of making it to where it's consistent, that's when, that's when it, you know, is going to take that to the next level. Yeah, football is an interesting game. You can have everything go right on one play, and it just doesn't work out how you think it would. And you can have a lot of things go wrong, and then it gives you a positive result. Um, oh, yeah. Just big plays can happen. All kinds of things can happen. And a handoff to Renteria. Renteria is going to break a tackle, and he'll get shoved out. Got a flag there coming in late. Uh, it looked like they might have came in with the uh, helmet there. and Maybe a little bit close to the sideline. We'll see if we have a replay there. 
That's a big Personal time penalty. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 11. That 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. So 15-yard penalty there. And we got a minute 11 left. That's a, that's a pretty big time penalty. I don't know if I saw the face mask there. Um, looked more like one of those kind of helmet-to-helmet hits they're calling more nowadays. Uh, we had our center give a little flinch right there. Going to lose five now. Offense, number 54. It's a five-yard penalty. First down. I mean, like you said, learning, learning during the game. I mean, that's... Uh, you know, he his you know he just accepted it, said his his fault, and I mean that's just things like that that you just you don't when you make mistakes you just gotta learn from them, and that's the only way you can get better. So, no, Villarreal's in trouble here. He's gonna go down, get sacked there about the thirty yard line. Looks like Christian Bowman in there to make the sack. That'll be another. It's a loss of seven there. So after that fifteen yard face mask on the Renteria run. Um, we're going backwards two plays in a row. Let's see if we can get some of that yardage back here and make it a manageable third down. Looks like we're content with going into the locker room right now. He has a long, a long way to go, um, especially with the wind blowing the direction it is. I mean, it's be tough to kick a long field goal this way, and you really don't want to give anything up to allow them to put more points on the board. Um, so, yeah, it looks like they're going to let the clock run down. Call it a half. We'll call it a half too, and uh, come back with some uh, stats and updates here before the start of the second half. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Entertainment is the core gymnastics. <laughs> Well, today is a good opportunity to kind of see some of the conference schools and who will be up against November 6th. Looking to close the gap on the men's side to the top three teams and then on the women's side show that we're capable of receiving votes in the national poll in the next couple weeks. Let's get it.
give these young ladies a hand. Good job, ladies. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic is a supporter of Tabor College and proud to treat our Tabor students and athletes. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic offers affordable chiropractic care for the entire family. We offer spinal adjustments and cold laser therapy, decompression and flexion distraction therapy, and are board certified in acupuncture as well as DOT certified. Come see us at 122 South Main Street in Hillsboro or call Panzer Chiropractic Clinic for an appointment today at 620-947-3157. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Think about how good it feels when people really get you. Like the friends who come over when a big game is on, the neighbors next door who always bring your favorite buffalo dip, your in-laws who know you need silence during the clutch plays, and everyone who knows about your special post-win fist bump. It's kind of like having a State Farm agent like Paul Brooks. Paul is here to get to know you and understand your life so he can help make it easy for you to protect what's important. Get an agent that gets you and your fist bumps. Call State Farm agent Paul Brooks in Wichita at 316-721-8181. 
At BombGars, we want to be your one-stop shop. From DeWalt power tools to workwear and footwear, plus seasonal goods, livestock feed, pet food, and so much more. Family owned and operated for more than 70 years, we knock ourselves out to deliver legendary customer service. And with more than 100 stores serving customers from the Midwest to the Rockies, we strive to have what you need. Ladies and gentlemen, this just in from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Media moguls Floyd Wonder are now the richest men in the world. That's right, forget about Carnegie, forget about Ford, forget about Rockefeller. Floyd Wonder has the Midas touch. Sources say they're worth millions. Some say billions. Look out, folks. Here they come. I don't really care. I'm going to be a millionaire like you. Uh, today is a good opportunity to uh, kind of see some of the conference schools and who will be up against November 6th. Looking to close the gap on the men's side to the top three teams and then on the women's side show that we're capable of receiving votes in the national poll in the next couple weeks. Let's get it.
think about how good it feels when people really get you. Like the friends who come over when a big game is on, the neighbors next door who always bring your favorite buffalo dip, your in-laws who know you need silence during the clutch plays, and everyone who knows about your special post-win fist bump. It's kind of like having a State Farm agent like Paul Brooks. Paul is here to get to know you and understand your life, so he can help make it easy for you to protect what's important. Get an agent that gets you and your fist bumps. Call State Farm agent Paul Brooks in Wichita at 316-721-8181. At BombGars, we want to be your one-stop shop. From DeWalt power tools to workwear and footwear, plus seasonal goods, livestock feed, pet food, and so much more. Family owned and operated for more than 70 years, we knock ourselves out to deliver legendary customer service. And with more than 100 stores serving customers from the Midwest to the Rockies, we strive to have what you need. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic is a supporter of Tabor College and proud to treat our Tabor students and athletes. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic offers affordable chiropractic care for the entire family. We offer spinal adjustments and cold laser therapy, decompression and flexion distraction therapy, and are board certified in acupuncture as well as DOT certified. Come see us at 122 South Main Street in Hillsboro or call Panzer Chiropractic Clinic for an appointment today at 620-947-3157. Well, today is a good opportunity to kind of see some of the conference schools and who will be up against November 6th. Looking to close the gap on the men's side to the top three teams and then on the women's side show that we're capable of receiving votes in the national poll in the next couple weeks. Let's get it.
Franklin Miller is deep for the Blue Jays to receive the opening kickoff of the second half. So we're back from halftime, and uh, so the Blue Jays are set to receive. Uh, they'll be going into that uh, about 10 to 15 mile an hour wind. And let it go through the end zone for a touchback. Yeah, Grant, when I went down there to uh, get a burger and a, and a drink, man, that wind is really blowing. It is really blowing a lot more than when we first got here. Yeah, it is. It's kind of surprising how much that's gusted up. Uh, we've got uh, some stats from halftime here um, for Kansas Wesley and go through some offensive stats there. Uh, they've got uh, 33 for 197 for um, rushing. They've got 130 passing yards. Total offensive plays at 57 plays for 327 yards. Just kind of exploded there. Um, 7 of 12 on third down and uh, 4 of 5 on their fourth down conversions. Some of the leaders for uh, Kansas Wesleyan, uh, Isaiah Randall uh, passing, says 9 of 15 for 73 yards. And uh, he's gone out with an injury. We hope he's going to be okay and it's not too serious. And we've also got for the rushing uh, attack for the Coyotes, Tony White. He's had one attempt for 26 Defense, yards. Number 11. Nick Olsman had 12 carries, 65 yards, and two touchdowns. Uh, then we had C.J. Fluker had 16 carries for 106 yards and a touchdown in that first half. The receiving leaders for the Coyotes, Stevie Williams, he had six receptions for 37 yards. Uh, Nick Olsman, one for 13. And uh, Stephen Harvey, one for 17. The Blue Jays uh, they struggled a little bit on that offensive uh, side in the first half. Uh, they've got 10 rushes for 8 yards, 106 passing yards. Um, total yards, they had 23 plays for 114. So uh, Kansas Wesleyan ran uh, over twice as many plays as Tabor did in that first half. Uh, leaders for Tabor, we had Gustavo Villarreal, 5 of 13, 106 yards and a touchdown. Uh, rushing. Uh, we didn't have a whole lot happen in there. Gustavo, three attempts for minus 11 yards. Jacob File, two attempts for three yards. Andre Renteria, four for 14 yards. Uh, receiving, Caleb Hoppus, kind of uh, leading the pack there. He had um, one reception for 23 yards. Angel Sanchez, uh, kind of the spark on the offense right now. Two receptions, 67 yards, and a touchdown. So uh, we'll see what the Blue Jays can do in this second half. we got a third down and short coming up here. See if they can pick that up. Yeah, just real quick, uh, I mean, you touch on Angel Sanchez, and I completely agree. And right out the gate um, here at halftime, as Villarreal goes for the QB sneak and gets uh, the first down. So good job there. But what I was going to say is uh, Angel Sanchez, they go um, throw a bomb to him first, pit, uh, first uh, play of the half, and – Gets a PI call um, that gets the uh, the Blue Jays up the field quite a bit. So looking good here on this first drive so far. Yeah, I tell you what, uh, there is nothing more beautiful than a well-executed quarterback sneak. It's just the simple things in football that uh, love to see. A little swing pass there to Angel. Angel again. Try to get him in some space. Oh, that's. And. Uh, yep, that's a flag. It's they're going to pull flag. that flag there. It looked like a little bit of. <laughs> extra WWF right there. Um, yeah, it's kind of almost like a suplex. <laughs> yeah, it was a good tackle. Just took it a little bit too far, it looks like. Uh, the cha channeling his inner defense Rick Flair 41. right there a little bit. It's a 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. So uh, on this first drive... Uh, Two big penalties uh, by the Coyotes, helping the Blue Jays get down the field quite a bit. Nothing to take away, though, from the offense. Offense looks good so far. Let's see what we can do here. It's a good uh, short pass out to Hoppus, pick up uh, about five yards. And Hoppus has got some hands on him. An offensive line, they've got their hands full with that defensive line. They've uh, done some good stunts and twists up front, uh, which is 
definitely not an easy thing to pick up, but that last play they were they were up to the challenge and recognized it. You know, that is a part of football that just, you know, the average fan just doesn't really notice. And such a, such a big part of the game. Oh, Gustavo makes a guy miss. He's going to get back uh, close to the line of scrimmage. Uh, maybe a small gain there, a couple yards. Yeah, that's watching those big guys down there. It, it, you know, it, it just seems kind of like a, a a scrum most plays, but really you're you're, you're kind of playing a chess match a lot of times, especially as a defensive lineman. You're trying to set the offensive lineman up for pass rush moves, trying not to give away too much with how your stance is or how you're lined up. Um, there's a lot happening there that really probably doesn't get recognized a whole lot. <coughs> Uh, unless you've you've played the position before. And folks, uh, Grant did not just play the position. He played it very well. He was an All-American for Tabor. Way back in the day. <laughs> yeah, you could ask if you, you, you think you could still play, and my answer is uh, emphatic no. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure I would blow out both my ACLs if I even tried one play right now. <laughs> you know, really the game has just changed so much, uh, especially over the last 15 years. I mean, these offenses are just crazy inventive um, with what they're doing. You know, the, the, the innovation with the RPO, the run pass option things coming in. Uh, it just makes everything so difficult for defenses nowadays. For sure. Ooh. That was a great catch by Angel Sanchez. There he is again. Good diving catch. Made good adjustment to the ball. It's that little spark we needed. Uh-oh, what are we doing here? Looks like we're doing a little trick. Angel Sanchez trick snapping it now. What, what we got? What we got? Oh, Angel Sanchez. Goes for the pylon and touchdown, Blue Jays. That's it. We've got to pull out a little bit of trickery there. I'm telling you, folks. Catch them off guard. If you didn't have Angel Sanchez on your fantasy team, not looking good. Yeah, man, you're right about that, Jake. He's uh, he's having a having a heck of a game. It's exciting to see. He's 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 just a freshman. Um, so uh oh, you know, he's, got a he's coming good. to the sideline though. Plays Grabbing there. his arm a little bit. Headed. Our, our training staff is top of the line, and looks like Troy is working on him right now. Hopefully nothing serious. So, And the extra point's good. Yeah, so that uh, touchdown drive kept by Angel Sanchez. Got a little bit of a little bit of help from a couple of uh, penalties. And, yeah, the Blue Jays are right there at 27-14. Against number eight in the nation, Kansas Wesleyan. We'll take a quick break, uh, come back to the kickoff. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. And he'll look back here to kick off for the Blue Jays. Stevie Williams fields it there, uh, making a couple would-be tacklers miss. Good little run right there uh, by Stevie Williams. Start about the 39 yard line for the drive. 
The Waves on the return for a short kick for Kansas Wesleyan. They will take over first and 10 from the year on the 39 yard line. Hope everybody out there is enjoying uh, the stream and enjoying their Saturday as they watch the Blue Jays. Enjoying this, uh, it's hard not to enjoy this stream, you know, with the things that these guys do. It's just, it's awesome for all the sports here at Tabor. Absolutely. Now, Tony White, it's a good pass there, good protection. Looked like... Uh, Bill Bear Jones right there with the uh, with the catch. I haven't I haven't seen him out there yet. That was a good catch though. Well, we actually had Patton German on that one. They've got two, Kansas Wesleyan's got two number sevens. Oh yeah, that was Patton German. Oh, that's the University of Utah transfer right there. Yeah. It looks like going back to Fluker, gain of about a yard on that play. Imagine this uh, second half is going to be a, a, a big dose of uh, Fluker for sure and probably Alsman mixed in there. Looks like 84 is lined up. Oh, nope, didn't call it. Stevie Williams out here on the little screen. Yeah, Stevie's shifty. He can, uh, he can make that uh, short pass. He can turn it into something uh, pretty special. The Blue Jays have done a pretty good job of containing him most of the day from any kind of big plays. You know, it definitely looks like Coach Hill um, had had talked about it this week, you know, going into this game, a game plan for Stevie, because he is that type of receiver that he is. He pops up on your scouting report, you know, and, That's right. um, you know, the tacklers and defense have been doing a really good job of, of containing him, like you said, uh, just not allowing him to get that big play. It looks like Fluker is going to uh, pick up the first down. It's barely there. Yeah, in a couple of these situations, they're talking about the game plan coming into it. They've they've had to put uh, these young corners in a one-to-one -one spot um, just because of this rushing attack. They've had to kind of go into some coverages where they can't offer up some of the help that they traditionally would. Um, there's so much attention being paid to uh, Fluker and Alsman. Got a Blue Jay down there. Uh Looks like Ray Peralt, um, just slow to get up. Uh, he's uh, being helped off the field right now. Yeah, it looks like um, we've got a injury timeout. We'll be back uh, here in a few. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or bodybuild, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Second down five for the Coyotes. And we're back for the second down play and <clears throat> going to give it to Alsman. He's going to be uh, uh, dropped for about a loss of one. Great play by the Blue Jays. Looked like Cole Long got in on that uh, tackle there. Juwan Thompson. It's good to see Juwan back out there. He's been he's been banged up this season. Uh, I think game two or three of this year he, he went down. Um, the, one of those high ankle sprains. Tell you what, when you're a big guy like that, an ankle sprain is, is no joke. Uh, it takes quite a while to recover from, so it's good to see him out there. And White's going to pass, trying to set up a screen. He's got Stevie's. Yep, there's a, a, a great play by Stevie Williams. He's, uh, that's what we talked about. The Blue Jays, uh, to this point, had done a great job containing him on those... Uh, kind of short throws that made that screen, turned it into about a 30-yard touchdown reception. 33-14 right here in the third. 
about halfway through. Williams almost looked like he was uh, channeling his inner Tyreek Hill right there. Turning a small screen play into a big play. There's no doubt about that. Talk about the Chiefs a little bit. You know, they got the big matchup with the Titans here coming up uh, tomorrow at noon. And they got to face old King Henry. Yeah. I tell you that that game uh, seemed like it got quite a bit more interesting after the the Titans had knocked off the Bills. Yeah, absolutely, and you know that there isn't anybody hotter as far as running back wise go. And you know it's not even cold time yet. They, you know, whenever the the cold weather starts to come, it seems like you know Derrick Henry really just starts to explode. But I don't know how much more you can do than what he's doing right now. You're right. He's a he's a freight train, and they're riding that. Aaron Main goes to kick off again. Put the ball down on the tee and a little wobbly as it got down there. Again, that wind is kind of howling. Looks yeah, that like one's going to go into the end zone for a touchback. Touchback. Shout out to Carol Hunt making the play on the ball there on the sideline. <laughs> So last drive out, we got uh, Tabor got helped by a couple of a couple of penalties, and then capped off that drive with a, a few plays to Angel Sanchez for the touchdown. And it's good to see Angel back out there. He came out after that touchdown, kind of banged up, holding his shoulder. So looks like he's good to go. I hear he's a tough kid too. I know he's a good kid. I've I've, I've talked to him a couple times around campus and. Yeah, he's a, he seems like a really good kid. Glad to see him back out there. Oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. Big play to Franklin Miller. Let's see if he can finish it. Big time. Big time. Great throw, great catch, great protection. It's great all around. You're right. That's good to see that spark coming in there and a good response from the Blue Jays. You know, Grant, you're right. You touched on it at the very beginning of the game. We do have that big playability. It's there, you know, and if and you see the replay here again. What a perfect throw into the wind, just on the money. Franklin Miller takes it, gets the separation from the defender. Just a great pay, play. Yeah, absolutely. That's the that's the uh the growing pains of, you know, building a team up from uh, young players and it's good to see those sparks like that. Yeah, because, you know, those sparks, you can teach. There's a lot of things that you can learn from and stuff, but, you know, the, the those spark-type plays, those big-time plays, are, you just really can't teach it. And it's so good to see, you know, these guys show flashes of just being, having that ne next level in them. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's a, it's a tough, it's tough when you have a, a season like the Blue Jays are having where it doesn't quite go your way, but... Uh, you know, you, you, you're growing, you're learning, um, but all these guys, uh, they're definite competitors, and it's really tough when you're, you're on those kinds of teams where you see the talent, you see the potential, um, and you see those kinds of plays, but you just can't string enough of them together mm -hmm. uh, to always get it to translate into a win. Yeah, and, and you know, I'm sure the coaching staff is doing a good job of this because, well, first of all, Gardner has won a lot of football games, and he know, I mean, he's a winner, you know, and he's going to get this program back going to where it was, and there's no doubt about it. And, you know, it's just um, it's just really good to see these guys make those make those big-time plays. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, uh, played for – uh, Coach Gardner for several years, and uh, I coached with him on his staff for a few years as well. And yeah, describe him a little bit, Grant. Oh, I tell you what. What do you think of Coach G? He is, uh, you know, it, it's really tough to kind of describe him other than um, just what I experienced from a, a player's perspective. And I, I, I've never had a coach in my entire playing career that cared as much as he actually cares about each one of these individual 
student athletes. Um, yeah, it, it's it's remarkable. He he takes you from kind of being a, a a young guy that, for me personally, a young guy that was just interested in being on the field, and he brings all kinds of other elements into your life uh, from a mentorship perspective, and just kind of teaching these guys how to become young men. Um, you know that love God uh, and that uh, you know just just becoming better from uh, being a part of that team he invests quite a bit in that and then him as a person uh, yeah you don't you don't ever know um, or you always know where he where he is on everything you know he, he has his emotions on a sleeve and you know when he's happy you know when he's uh, unhappy um and that's one of the things that i appreciated about him as a coach was just the honesty and um it's nice having that a coach that is real with you and um cares about you yeah that's good stuff man you can definitely see it in him you know i i didn't play for him i played baseball but you know just the just how passionate he is when he talks about really anything not even football you know football especially but when he just talks to you like I mean, he, you're exactly right. Like, he's just a really good guy and um, really easy to talk to and communicate with and just a great mentor for all of these guys. Absolutely. And, and I tell you what, he knows football. Um, I, 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 before you say any more, I just want to say one thing. I, I took a coaching football class with Coach Gardner as a student, and, man, did I not realize how – when we he brought he put on some film of some I don't even know what year it was but it was I remember specifically it being the Steelers and it was a some kind of, we were going over some defensive scheme or something but man he hiked his leg up on the on the desk and and he was just going in on how just talking about the defense and how in depth and you know that's one thing I noticed is that he doesn't look at stuff on the surface he just looks like like why is this happening and you know just the in depth. Uh, part of football um and uh anyways it's just something that i really i mean yes he knows his football you're exactly right yeah that's right i mean he, he his dad was a, a, a football coach for uh you know 25 30 30 years here in the state of kansas at both the high school and the college level um and he came from that and yeah he's he's you know forgotten more football than i can ever imagine but um, some of the inventive things that he's done with defenses um, and just being able to adapt over the years, uh, it's no small feat with all of the offensive explosion that's happened. Yeah, just to get back to the game, Tabor did a great job on defense and forcing Kansas Wesleyan to punt, which is something that, well, this game it's the first time, but yeah. in general this season, I don't have the stats in front of me, but I would go to say that they don't punt a lot. <laughs> and. <laughs> You know, that was a good job of the Tabor defense, getting a stop right there and forcing the punt. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this uh, this third quarter has been pretty impressive for Tabor so far. Um, you know, that stop, uh, touchdown drives, and, uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're going into the wind right now too. So uh, it'll be good to have that wind at their backs at the fourth quarter and, yeah, see if we can get something going here. Well, toss to Renteria. That's kind of his bread and butter play. There we go. Play. There we go. You know, there's 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 types of backs that you can kind of categorize them: scat backs, power backs, uh, vision backs. Renteria's got a little bit of all of those, but the thing that I see the most with him when he plays, he's just got that. He's got a good cut. He's got a good first cut, and he's got that good vision. Um, he, he doesn't really have many negative plays when he gets the ball. Now, Grant, is that something that you think that can develop, you know, like you can really teach, or is that something that you kind of, it's more of a thing that somebody just kind of has? You know, that, that, that's, a, that's a good question, and that, that's definitely something that you're, you just have. Um, you know, you, you develop that when you're, a, you know, young, playing that kind of Pop Warner type of football, and you just develop with that over the, the course of your career. But Sure. Play action and another bomb. Ooh. A little too far there looking for Hoppus. 
tell you what, if that ball was anywhere, the wind obviously played a huge, plays a huge factor in these long throws, but if that ball is anywhere close to Hoppus, I guarantee he's coming down with it. He, you know, he, he's just got, I, I, he's shown it today and I've seen it in the other games. He's got some really good hands. Yeah, he does. He, he, he really has a great catch radius. Strong hands, good route runner. We got file in uh, is that Renteria back there, or no? That was Franklin Miller. We get some pressure over to file, makes Ooh, one make miss, and two. two. He's gonna That's pick a up a first. Nah. It's a good first down. It's a big time play right there. It's good to see those little kinds of dump off passes were something we've been struggling with for not just this game, but the the kind of the season coming into it so seeing those little things uh, when a play breaks down and the Blue Jays being able to capitalize on that and kind of think on their feet a little bit yeah it definitely just seems to be something that neat that it has to be there you know like if you if you want to be a, a good offense because you know people might have and there's the announcer jinx right there <laughs> right <laughs> uh, I talk about hop it's just a uh, you know you don't see that often but it did kind of go off his hands right there but um but yeah yeah i'm 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 liking this uh the pr the kansas wesleyan's bringing some pressure i like to see that because that means they're getting a little bit impatient and they're not feeling like they're getting enough with those front four uh to hurry those throws mm. Yeah, another another drop there. It was Franklin Miller. Would have been a first down. Just couldn't quite haul it in. It was good protection by the O-line. and Yeah, that's one of the funny things about football is, like I said, you can have great protection, great throw, and it just might not work out. They're going with an empty look here. See if they're going to do something underneath, over the top. Maybe a little screen. Mm. Yeah, I just got a little bit too high there for Jackson. I'm going to have to punt it away. Nelson's had a pretty good day punting. Um... I actually think most of his punts have been into the wind now up to this point, and he's been able to get that, that Tabor bounce. See if we can do it again. It was kind of a high one out of bounds there. That punt goes out of bounds at the 30, 30 yard line. Third down Kansas Wesley. So Danny Woodard down there trying to return it from the sideline. Got a big, uh, big stop last time for the defense, and see if we can do that again. Just broke through there. Halsman got a good run and chase see down if we're though. gonna be. Yep, we got Hawk down there. It was a really good play, Kent's Wesleyan. I mean, that's like you said, they're bread and butter. They kind of just going back to it um, by Halsman, and it was a good job by Khalil Mason though, not giving up on the play and seeing if they can't make something happen here. Uh, no, quick, quick uh, up to the line and hand it off again to Halsman yeah. for the the touchdown. Yeah, yeah. The offensive line for Kansas Wesleyan is doing a—they're doing a pretty, pretty good job, particularly on that uh, big run by Allsman of getting up to the second level and uh, just climbing up there and, and getting hands on the, our backers. Now 
Yeah, that uh, we've been talking about Tabor's big plays. Uh, Kansas Wesleyan is definitely uh, capable of those big plays. Yeah, Kansas Wesleyan is. I mean, they're putting. A, um, they're they're doing a good job of. I mean, they're just showcasing all you know everything that they got and. I'm really, you know, excited to see what they do, you know, as the season progresses and as they go represent the KCAC. And, um, you know, I, I hope Rand Randall's all right and everything and they can get back to full strength and just kind of go out there and fight for the KCAC at the national level. I mean, with what they have, what we're seeing talent-wise, and, and they got they got a bunch of guys that have, have been playing for a while. You know, they're older I mean, all that, all those things, the experience, experience is such a big thing in the postseason. You know, it's just it's something you can touch on. I mean, you, I mean, you had, you played on some really good teams here at Tabor and, um, yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, uh, you have some experience like that, um, going into it, it just, uh, alleviates nerves. That's a big thing. And, uh, the other thing too, is just, yeah, being able to have the confidence that, you know, you belong there. And uh, a couple of years ago, Kansas Wesleyan had, uh, I think they made a, a push all the way to the uh, semis and were just a couple of plays short of actually going to the national championship. I think that was back when Matt Drinkle um, was the head coach, Kansas Wesleyan. After that season, I think he moved on to uh, uh, Army, and uh, he's been coaching with Army here for the past couple of years. Yeah, Hendrickson. You know, Coach Hendrickson has done a really good job with these guys so far this year, too. So, yeah, I'm just really, really looking forward to seeing what kind of run they can they can make here as the season progresses. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I think they've got to play Southwestern still, um, and that'll be a good game. That's either uh, the last week or uh, close to in the season for them. It'll be a big game to probably – play a big factor in who is the conference championship i yeah. believe kansas wesleyan had uh, beat bethel i believe earlier in the uh season so grant um let's just talk about it a little bit and then that way you can kind of explain to the viewers too for those that maybe don't know as much or um about how the playoff uh system works but uh it's, it's the top 16 that get into the national playoff is that correct yeah, that's that's correct. Unless they've uh, uh, changed something um, since I've played, it's the conference championship uh, or conference champion from each of the conferences, and then there's uh, uh, a few at-large bids, and those go to the uh, highest highest ranked teams at the end of the season. Gotcha. And so, if you win your conference, you're automatically in the playoff. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And it's a 16-team playoff, correct? Yeah, that's right. 16 teams. Cool. A couple of buys for the top seeds. Gotcha, gotcha. There you go. A little trick play right there. Actually, I'm sorry. There aren't any buys. No uh, buys. No buys. Got a little wildcat there with Renteria. Got that direct snap and... Took it in for a first down there. I like how there's 16 teams, though. You know, I just – that's just my personal opinion. Uh, you know, when you when you ha when you you put together that good of a season and you're in the top 16 in the entire country or, you know, you win your conference or, you know, you're up there at least in the top 20, you would think that mo all the teams would be in. You know, I think you deserve a chance to at least make a run for it, you know, and I, it's something that, you know, at the, you know, Division One level and stuff that – they haven't they haven't got to yet, but I really like that you know they they have that they give sixteen teams a chance to go for it. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's why I, I love watching the uh, NAIA playoffs and following that. We had another drop right here. Uh, it's kind of been the, the the story of the third quarter here in the second half of the third quarter is just uh, some big big drops from Tabor. Let's see if we can get a. A conversion here on a third and long. Yeah, what is the uh, FCS up to now? Didn't they change how many teams are going to be in the 
the college playoffs, or is that just still being talked about? It's still being talked about, I believe. I think it's still the four. Um, and, you know, this year, though, I, it's kind of some chaos happening at the oh, ball tipped and nearly picked off. Um, but Devonte Gabriel, but yeah, I think it's yeah, it's still the top four, um, you know. And they, but yeah, like I said, there's some chaos in there because um, there's a team, uh, Cincinnati, that's not in the uh, quote unquote Power Five, um, and they are currently undefeated with some big wins over Notre Dame, and uh, I believe Indiana was another Power Five win that they had, and so uh, yeah, they're they're kind of right in the mix there with, I mean, Georgia, I believe, is number one, and then a couple of the other teams like Alabama, who's always there, and and then some of the other teams that are just right there with them. So, Yeah, that makes me think about those uh, Boise State teams that uh, had uh, caused some, some, some noise back there, uh, mm-hmm. you know, 10, 12 years ago. That was uh, fun to watch. We were able to get that punt off. It that that looked like it could have been blocked pretty easily, but Nelson was able to kind of corral that and get it off quickly. And Coyotes look like they're going to start about the 36-yard line. Oh hey! Oh. Oh, oh, Tabor, Tabor recovers. does recover. Must the, have been down when he recovered it. The football. Because they blew the whistle right away. There we go. That's good. That's a spark on the defense. Man, you just need them turnovers, don't you? Like, I mean, that's as a defense, you just you got to hunt that ball. That's a good job by the Tabor defense right there. Yeah, absolutely. It looked like Jaden Alexander just kind of stuck his nose in there and made something happen. A great job by... Jaden Alexander. So defense gets us the ball back. Um, let's see if we can – need to get some points here. Need to get some points and get the momentum back going again. Uh, about to roll into the fourth quarter here. Got Angel coming across. Oh, look, deep ball here. Oh, just outside of his hands there. So close, man. I mean, there's been a lot of plays that have just been so close. Jackson falls incomplete, bringing up second and ten for the Blue Jays. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see kind of how they do these next couple of plays and see if they uh, want to wait till they. Try to get it into the fourth quarter to get some wind. Here's definitely an interesting play back. for you. Be a real lined up out wide. There's Hoppus in there. He's going to scrap forward about five, six yards. I'm wondering if we might have had some uh, illegal formation there. That's the thing you got to look Offense. for. On That's a five yard penalty. Repeat third down. Yeah, you look for sometimes on those plays where you're doing uh, putting your quarterback out wide there and moving some different guys around. Make sure you got everyone on the line and off the line that needs to be. That penalty brings up third and 15 for the Blue Jays from the 41-yard line of KW. Yeah, I wonder if they're going to maybe try to run the ball and – Go into the fourth quarter. Second down and 15. We'll have a little wind at their back then. You do got to get some yards here, though. Mm hmm. Need to make this third and manageable right here. Maybe, I mean, obvi- I mean, maybe not looking for the first down on this play, but getting it to where maybe just split it these next two plays and get you somewhere in a spot where it's just third and third and manageable. A little conversation with the officials over there on the Kansas Wesleyan sideline. I 
And they're going to run it. Renteria picks up about one or two. Brings out third and 13. Looks like we're going to take it to the fourth. Now we'll take a quick break and uh, yeah, I'll be back with the fourth quarter. That's the end of the third quarter. Your third quarter score, Kansas Wesleyan 41, Tabor 21. I get this feeling in my spirit when I'm low. I hear it calling like a compass in my soul. Saying, child, come on back now. You've been gone too long. Let me lead you back where you belong. Right next to me. Right next to me. Coming back at the start of the fourth quarter, got a third and 13. Let's see what uh, Coach Nelson has dialed up here. Right after this third down, I'll give you a little score update on a couple KCAC games. There's Angel. Make a man miss. Oh, get up field, get up field. Yeah, Angel's going to be uh, about two yards short. So we've got a decision there. We've got the wind at our backs and uh, you know, it's a fourth and two. I imagine coach is probably just going to go for it. And real quick, um, so Bethel is up on Sterling by only seven points uh, with uh, only up by a touchdown going into the fourth quarter there. So Sterling's doing a pretty good job. And then we get back here, fourth down, fourth and two for the Blue Jays. Oh, and I think he's just going to be short. Depends where they spot him. Go, go, Franklin go. Miller had to go down uh, to catch that one, and yeah, Villarreal just had some pressure right in his face on that bootleg and Man. had to throw it a little bit lower. I'd like to see the replay on that, just see where the ball happened to be on that catch. It was really close. It was a good catch, too. Yeah, it's those... It's As he's uh, getting hit. Ooh, that's yeah, close. I think that goes either way. Yeah. Just yeah, right yeah, there, maybe a little bit just, short. Yeah, it's a good call by the ref. Those bootlegs are tough timing plays. You know, Franklin Miller had to chip that guy just enough and then get out quickly to get open, but Villarreal took a shot too as he threw that. There we go. It's a good sack by the Blue Jays. We're trying to bring down big Tony White there. He's I know, again, he's 6'3", 210 pounds. He's not an easy guy to bring down. Took quite a few Blue Jays there. Looks like uh, Keyshawn Oliver was in there to make that sack. Yeah, that's right. The freshman out of Oklahoma City. Looks like we got a penalty there, a false start. False start. Offense, number 17. That's a five-yard penalty, second down. You know, it's going to be a – you're going to look at like a second and 25 or so. And 17 after the penalty. 17. It's a big-time play right here. If we can get them to have a really third and long. Oh, there we go. Good coverage. That's a good job. I'll tell you what, our corners have been oppressive. I, I know I've already said it, but – I mean, the, they have a serious challenge today, you know, and it's these receivers are, are just putting up numbers against everyone, and they've done they've done a good job, you know, when they're one on one with these guys. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Lang and Mason, they, they they have they've done a great job. That's such a big thing that you know to to be able to count on too. That way you can focus on maybe a team that like Kansas Wesleyan that oh 
just missed it. Oh, tackle him. Yep. Mm -hmm. Parker almost had a had an interception right there go right through his hands. <laughs> that would be hard to believe he wouldn't have got a touchdown right there too if he would have picked that off. It was uh, no one in front of him and kind of running that way and just went right through his hands. Yeah, it's a it was a great job by the defense there, holding them and forcing a punt here. And we've got Angel Sanchez and uh, Franklin Miller back here. We're trying to trying to get a good return on. You no, know, we're going to uh, get our punting into the wind, so we're hoping we get a good return here. Tell you what, I saw Miguel right here who's punting for Kansas Wesleyan. Yeah, he – there at halftime, that's a good punt right there into the wind. He he was doing a, a – I mean, he was <laughs> booting the ball that's there good. at halftime. He's, he's, he's a good player, man. Such a key thing. I mean, the punter is such a big position. You know, like when you – when you can – pin a team back or you know it's just such a big time position if you have a good punter yeah yeah that's 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 one of those jobs on the football field that you got to be kind of mentally locked in or have the ability to lock yourself in immediately because you're only looking at a handful of plays a game so you got to be ready to go pretty much all the time um it's not like some of the other positions where you can get in a rhythm it's uh, you got to be able to punt from anywhere on the field. That's for mm -hmm. sure. A little bit of a low pass there, looking for Hoppus. Not really catchable. Yeah, this wind's picked up uh, even more here just in the last couple of minutes. Kind of gusty now. You're gonna run it with file and he kind of pinballs around a little bit and picks up a five, pretty good run there. I mean, he's a tough kid, ain't he? I mean, he just, he, it, it, it seems like, I mean, he's, he's one of the smallest guys out there and he's just, he gets hit the first time, and he just doesn't go down right away. You yeah. know, he's trying to get that extra yard here and there, and that's, I mean, that's you can definitely just see that in the kid. That's right. Yeah, good strong runner. Actually, oh, Villarreal gets yeah. away from one. Is a. Fumble and it looks like they've got a turnover here. Just recovered it before it went out of bounds. Yeah, he took a shot there. Yeah, he did. That's tough. They got that uh, quicks protection there called. So the offensive line is basically doing a full line slide one way, and they're leaving the defensive end on one side for the running back. And um, you know, you you got to be able to just get rid of that ball quickly that protection's not going to last more than, you know, maybe two seconds typically when you're leaving a running back on the defensive end to, to block like that. You see right there, you know, File, he's trying to, <laughs> trying to block, a, you know, a guy that's probably 6'2", 250. There we go. Got a good stop there. Job, Parker folks in on that. Another second and long here. Looking. We've got a little bit of pressure coming on White. Go. Get him go for, for the, the ball. sack. <laughs> it looks like we got Cole Long doing a discount double check awesome. there. Two on the play <laughs> brings up third and 12. Cole Long and Parker Folks with the sack. Got third and long here, Kansas Wesleyan. Yeah, this is usually, seems like they've gone over to Williams and 
these situations usually with something kind of shorter, shorter intermediate, and just t try to let him make a play. Timeout. We've got a timeout now. Kansas Wesleyan. First we to take the half. a quick break. Think about how good it feels when people really get you. Like the friends who come over when a big game is on, the neighbors next door who always bring your favorite buffalo dip, your in-laws who know you need silence during the clutch plays, and everyone who knows about your special post-win fist bump. It's kind of like, like having like a State Farm agent Backers. like Paul Brooks. Paul is here to get to know you and understand your life, so he can help make it easy for you to protect what's important. Get an agent that gets you and your fist bumps. Call State Farm agent Paul Brooks in Wichita at 316-721-8181. At BombGars, we want to be your one-stop shop. From DeWalt power tools to workwear and footwear, plus seasonal goods, livestock feed, pet food, and so much more. Family owned and operated for more than 70 years, we knock ourselves out to deliver legendary customer service. And with more than 100 stores serving customers from the Midwest to the Rockies, we strive Strive to have what you need when you need it at Bumgars. St. Mary's up 31 to 19. And folks, St. Mary's just scored again. Um, they are up on Avila to start the fourth quarter, 31 to 19. Well, we've got so. a screen here to Fluker. Looks like he's uh, going to go down. Kind of tripped up right before, but also tackled by. Well, that was Lepke, Mitchell Lepke. Yes, it was. It's a good job of getting out there right there on him. Yeah, it's been tough. His brother Wyatt uh, has actually been out the last couple of weeks. He he had a, a concussion, and um, yeah, he's a pretty good corner, pretty good secondary guy for us, and it's been tough to be playing without him. Mm. You know, Fluker on the check down here, and. Uh, Making a couple of guys miss. Hit the ball. Looks like he's going to go out at about the three-yard line, four-yard line. And all has been back in there to uh, run it up the middle and uh, get stopped short of the goal line by a gang of Blue Jays. Looks like Kansas Wesleyan bringing in an extra big guy right here. Going with the bigger, bigger uh, package. Here we go. And... Uh, Looks like he's going to go try to run and just gets in. Tony White with the touchdown there. Um, he's just, he's a big guy, man. And once you get going downhill a little bit, it's just, it's just tough to tackle. Yeah, I like that. In those short yardage ranges. So Maine back in here to go for another extra point. And he hits it. So a good drive by Kansas Wesleyan um, after the uh, turnover. And a touchdown by Tony White. And we will take a short break right here before kickoff. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Franklin Miller's deep for the Blue Jays to receive the kickoff.
And we're back here with a short kick. Looks like file on the return. We got a flag on the play, though. Let's see what it is. the return. Illegal block below the waist. Return team, number 25. That's a 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. So with that penalty, uh, it's going to set the Blue Jays back to about the 21-yard line. You know, so like we talked about um, with uh, Tabor, you know, trying. We have a lot of young guys on the team, and um, you know, with some some upperclassmen that are serving as the mentors. But you know, really rebuilding, getting this program back to where it was, and you know, it's uh, there's bef definitely been some good, you know, good things coming out of this game, and that's. I mean, you got to kind of look at the look at that and and uh, look at the smaller victories and, and, and continue to build on them, you know, and understand what maybe the weaknesses are and establish those. But understand that it's not – there's definitely been some good signs. And, um, you know, one thing right here is just uh, maybe here towards the end of the game, uh, putting a couple good drives together and, um, and in this game on a high note. And that ball got batted around a little bit and looks like they're going to say it hit the turf. So we'll have a third and eight right here. As you see the replay here, just off the hands and just out of the reach. And that was Rico Moore there, really close to picking it off. <clears throat> and tough play right there, bringing up fourth down for the Blue Jays. And Nelson will be back into punt. Interested to see how far he kicks it here with the win. First punt going this way. Really booting it when we were going into the win. Let's see it. Man, look at that. Ah, well, it's still. I mean, that's a that's a incredible punt. Um, just bounces just out of bounds at the 20 yard line and if that keeps going it really may have gone even in into the end zone so maybe it's a good thing but um, he really put a put a boot into that one yeah kicked that from about the 20 to the 20 yeah Grant I was just talking about you know the score sure you know they're they're up by quite a bit but there's definitely you know some some good that we can get out of this and i mean sure yeah there's some some things obviously we need to you know address and work on but um you know as you're rebuilding and getting back to where you know things used to be you, you definitely got to look at those um those uh positives that have happened too and those are i mean definitely definitely here today yeah absolutely there's uh there, there's a lot you can learn from the film but you, you know seeing flashes like that from young guys you know right there we had number Number 90, um, this uh, Carter Mayer from uh, West Bend, Wisconsin. You know, it's a, it's a great play. He's shown some flashes today, too. Been doing a pretty good job of getting in some favorable uh, downs and distance as far as uh, defense is considered. But, uh, yeah, the third and fourth downs are been a bit, a bit of a struggle looks like uh kansas wesleyan uh going to a young puppet uh quarterback here for the last drive or two as a run there by well, that was a stephen harvey um yep. we hadn't seen him since the first from berkeley yeah. california but uh yeah we got it's isaac robinson back there 
um, for Kansas Wesleyan. He is just a freshman um, from Fountain, Colorado. Big, another big guy, six foot, two fifteen, at quarterback. Yeah, good job. Yeah, we had uh, Mitchell Lepke in on that one. Keyshawn Oliver there too. So the defense has been rotating quite a few guys in today, just trying to keep up with the fast-paced Kansas Wesleyan offense. Another new face out there wide for Kansas Wesleyan is uh, Cajun Holland uh, from Malibu, California. Yeah, there's some good penetration happening yeah. right there. Looks like we had Jordan Sukow in there. Um, yeah, then we also had Carter Mayer back in there too. You got a free play coming here. Oh, they whistled it dead. Looked like they got a couple of Blue Jays jumping off sides. Looking, looking like a Offside. Mahomes or defense number fifty-two. Aaron Rodgers right there penalty. going third down. Hard count and then free play. That's it. You know, I think this is a big possession for the defense. You, you got to finish strong, you know, and really, really sought after that. I mean, you just – oh, almost it on was. cue. Almost on cue there for Keyshawn a... Oliver. He just, just missed that pick. Between that one and, and the one down at the other end a couple possessions ago by Parker, you know, those, <laughs> those are two pick sixes that almost, almost happened. Yeah, that was uh, that's that kind of stuff, you know. Once you go through that, you know, Keyshawn is a young guy, and he's going to remember that one. You know, he'll remember that. He'll remember the feel of that play, watching it unfold, and he's going to get better from there. Be able to recognize those in the future. Well, good punt. Sanchez going to try to get a return. He's corralled there pretty quickly. Looks like it was Delvin Davis there on the coverage on that. He's from Spring Hill, Kansas. Good play by Davis. Good punt, too. We've got about four minutes left in the game. Yeah. Uh, what do we think we're going to see here? Well... I think they're going to go maybe a little hurry up and try to work on a little two-minute drill stuff. Just working quick. I'd say so. Go good, good catch, a uh, good throw and catch via Real to Franklin Miller. Getting close to a first down. There you see that sideline camera. That is something that's awesome. Definitely something that's new, new and and definitely something cool to add to the stream. Yeah, absolutely. I think we got Aiden Unruh on the uh, sideline camera today. Shout out to him doing a great job. Um, it's just a nice angle to be able to have for the viewers. There you go, Renteria. He's got that uh, kind of one-step one cut there initially. 
Uh, it seems like he's good for close to four yards almost automatically. Let's see what we got in third and one. Giving it to Andre again. He's going to pick up the first. Play action. Oh, going outside the pocket. Oh, um, and just out of the hands of Hops. Hops just sees it. You know, there's been a couple like that. Uh, you know, it's kind of been a little bit of the story of the game is just a little bit off on those uh, the connections with the deep ball. I'm telling you, Grant. There's a ball. Number seven. That's a ten yard penalty. Automatic first down. Penalty on Kansas West in there. There's about you know four or five plays that <laughs> are just inches away from making this game it is extremely closer we had the one on the one earlier in the first half that was just a throw that was just right out right outside of the fingertips and then that one and then the two um you know potential picks and it's just how it goes though you know and it's a it's a game of inches and uh just got to keep rolling it is it's a game of inches a game of chess you can you can Sit there and drive yourself crazy after a game, thinking about all the the, the shoulda, woulda, couldas, and uh, you definitely do when you're experiencing any kind of losses or those things. I um, mean, the good, the, you know, the good teams really are good at uh, examining those things when they're winning too, and not just uh, you know really picking apart things whenever they suffer a loss. Uh, but you're always trying to learn and get better, and try to find different things to motivate you. That's a great point there. He's going for Angel Sanchez right there. Just a little bit uh, kind of off target. He had to move a little bit too much in the pocket there. Gustavo really in there throwing or showing some heart though. I mean he he's taking some shots that uh, and he just gets right back up and ready to roll. Yeah, hey, tough kid. Yeah, popping up, just kind of not letting anything linger like that and going out for the next play. Mm. That pass is tipped and knocked down. Yeah, just kind of tipped down there. It looks like. Uh, you have to punt that away. Yeah, they're going to down it about the 19-yard line. Another uh, really good punt by uh, Nelson there. He's really done a great job today. Well, Kansas Wesleyan probably come out and see if they can just try to run out the clock. Hand the ball off, and or they're going to try to get their young quarterback maybe some throwing reps. And looks like they got Fluker back up. Nope, We've got another running back check in. Yeah. Mark Benjamin from Houston, Texas, freshman. Good little run.
Yeah, good fast back. He's uh, just bounced that out. Yeah, another good run by Benjamin. He stays in bounds, moves the chains, keeps the clock running. He's got a good explosive speed to him. Gonna make something happen there. And tackled though. Brought down by uh, the Chris Vixama. Yeah, so uh, Jake, it's been a, a game that probably was never really in reach for Tabor, um, but it did see quite a few things that, you know, you're going up against the number eight team um, in the country, and showing some of those flashes that they did, it just kind of gives me quite a bit of hope for the, the future, and uh you know, looking uh, towards that, getting these guys in the weight room, um, getting them bigger, stronger, developing them, more experience. Uh, you know, the Blue Jays are going to learn a lot from this. Absolutely. And you also just kind of see what, what, what the goal is to get to. You know, you don't just talk about it. You can kind of see it firsthand. And, um, yeah, I mean, they, I'm definitely excited for the future. I mean, it's – you heard how many times we said a freshman made a play, <laughs> you know, so at, very excited. Yeah, absolutely. So a uh, final score today, uh, Kansas Wesleyan 48, Tabor 21. We'll thank, sign thank, off, and yep. thanks for uh, listening.